bought it off a mate. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go with that. Bought it off a mate. Yeah, so yeah. Mannion. Um, yeah. We've, uh, we've known him for Zach's car. He bought it off Mannion. And uh, it's so I was always into Mark II Fiesta before I had this. Yeah. And so I had a wide arch Mark II Fiesta, like hand painted brown, proper range. Well, hand, hand painted, nice. Right? It's <laughs> high quality. We've hand, we've hand painted yeah. a few of our <laughs> was yeah, it, yeah. I hope it was a wide brush. <laughs> Roll it. Uh, <laughs> Oh, quality job then. Oh, did you use masking tape? <laughs> no. <laughs> what is masking tape? I think we used their uh, boxes to like panel wipe, old boxes off the floor yeah. to panel wipe. It yeah, I break. think we probably put more dust on it trying to wipe the dust off. <laughs> That's a whole other story for another day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, and it, it gradually just rotted out over the years. And I always thought, like, knew I needed another car. And then my friend had this. He bought it completely standard. Yep. And then he broke. A like a series two powered Mark to, uh, four Escort, and then pulled running gear in this, and then just smoked it around on like band stills with like a little CVH turbo. It was wicked. And then Actually, he went to do like a proper concourse EFI conversion. Yeah. Um, so he had all the bay painted and like did a he just the attention to detail was just unbelievable. Um, but never really finished it. Then put a ZTEC turbo in it and never really finished that. And for like a good couple of years, I was always just like. You know, when you want to, if you if you want to sell it, you know, it could be interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mates rates like, for you, yeah. And he was like, oh, you know, now's not really the time. And then I'd be like, oh, now's not really the time anyway. And then, yeah, one day I just sort of decided, I messaged him, I was like, it's time, what are you saying? And he's like, you know what, he's like, I'm never going to finish it. He's like, Might as well at that point. For a year, so, yeah, we come to a deal and uh, we went down there. And that's it, we traced it back to work, um, got it on the ramp, I think we rebuilt all the back brakes few bits and pieces like nothing mate it was just finishing it basically yeah. just yeah. lightening stuff up Michael down yeah. as well three of us did it in a day and i think we dropped it off we got back to great then about six o'clock in the evening yeah. like, like, when we proceeded nice. to load it up with yeah. even more stuff like just boxes of stuff engines and then we fall back over yeah so what, what engines in it at the moment so now it sort of went through a bit of developing at the minute it's an st170 turbo engine yeah. forged um, standard head and cam, hybrid Evo turbo with a big compressor wheel and a nine blade turbine wheel, and then just loads of like hand fabricated parts, really. Very nice. So, other, other than sort of the uh, the performance mods, so how was it? Did it come lowered as it is, or was that something that you guys did? No, I did that. It was pretty, pretty high when I got it. So, it's been lower <laughs> on stilts a bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to run it on banded stilts, and I ran it sort of about two inches lower than this. Yeah, it got to the point it was just using every day. I needed more grip, and so that's when I sort of went for a bit more jacked up, like the bigger to profile tires, yeah, the different wheels and stuff. I think you've got the stance on it absolutely yeah, perfect yeah. to be with. It, it, it took goes, me a bit of adjustment, goes, you, you end but up yeah, like it's slamming it one week, and it's like, yeah, man. Well, that's the you slam it and Actually, then you take a step back and you go, yeah, and yeah. then you get in and go, no. <laughs> oh, God, please, no, no. No, this when is a bad was, idea. Yeah, we did a show a couple of years ago and I sort of dropped it right down. It was the front cross bender, just hit the floor everywhere. Ooh. And uh, yeah, it looked wicked. Yeah, <laughs> but not practical in any way, shape, or form. But I think this is more like the, like, the European Germany sort of yeah. like stance. Yeah. I mean, it, I, it suits the car a bit more than having it, to me personally, all the way down on the floor. Because, but at that point, you just sort of go, because you know it doesn't work at that point, and it gets a bit irrelevant. God, this isn't clean in there as it is on the outside. Yeah, so this is like years of probably up like years five of work. or six years to get it to this point. Yeah, um, and then this is the latest incarnation. I took it off the road for the first time yeah. last year. I had it off the road for three months working on it more or less every evening, and uh, made a new radiator, remade the boost pipes, had a new inlet manifold, and then complete new engine management system. Fair so enough. Those who don't know, Zach. Now runs his own business, <laughs> yeah. and he does. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get a little bit of. Yeah. Uh, so you might yeah. as well plug. Is so everything that you see from the inlet manifold, boost pipes, radiator. You've modified the intercooler, but the intercooler is a. I haven't really modified that. You made the. <laughs> yeah, the manifold. manifold yeah. Uh, coil on plug, cover. It's all. Uh, no, it's 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 beautiful. Hand, I have to. And fabricated yeah. by Zach. Yeah. Oh, and catch can. Yeah. Fish. 
But yeah, the only thing somebody else has done on this car now is I've paid someone to route all the wiring down these wings. Yeah, because nobody, wants, nobody wants to wire, like, wire <laughs> <and> fire. <laughs> so I made, yeah, I made the engine bay loom, which I was quite proud of. Except the one bit you see, the most obvious one, the seals don't push into the uh, coil pack connector. So, yeah, which is yeah. really annoying because it's really obvious. Yeah, when everything, everything else is so like, yeah, when everything <laughs> yeah. Else that's is it, like, Tom. Yeah. Zoom in on that bit. We want all the imperfect bits. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, yeah, Best well, all fab like, is all yours. Yeah, yeah. self taught, yeah, well, stainless and alley welding. Well, I'm looking at the welding at the moment, and yeah, it is so. stacking dams. Beautiful. Beautiful welding. Is that literally like self taught in your own time? Or was, was it like your professional? No, 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 all in my. I had a few pointers here and there, but nothing like no proper teaching. Um, I worked at a company just as a mechanic MOT tester and then just fabricated the evening. It was only things that started off like I think oh, I just, just never really had the money to spend like seven, eight hundred quid on the inlet manifold and, and that's stuff where like you that. Start, and, so. and then, yeah, and I worked, I was like, we're surely, if somebody can make it, then why can't I make it? You do, yeah, you do the man maths of, well, I could make that for 200 quid. Yeah. How yeah. many, how many? No, I only had to buy 1,400 quid welders to but do it. But it takes you, <laughs> and it also takes you 800 quid's worth of materials yeah. to get the job done right. Yeah. So. But it started, my, my fabrication started off with banded steels, really. I used yeah. to sort of do odd bits and pieces of work. And then the first major thing I do, I got into doing banded steels. And then it just sort of went from there. And people would be like, oh, well, you can weld and you can cut stuff up, can you do this for me? And then I started doing a lot of stuff for myself. And then people would come to me just asking, like, I've seen you do this, can you yeah. do this, can you do this? Oh, yeah, word, word of mouth. And that's probably one of the best ways to get around it, isn't it? So is it just all the standard interior that's in it? And uh... um, Yeah, so it's largely standard. The only real thing I've done to it is um, I use a load of extra sound deadening underneath the front carpet. Yeah, which you, I imagine you need after yeah. you've done the bits that you um, done to the end anyway. The steering wheel is a genuine RS steering wheel that was retrimmed in brown leather with base nice. with yeah, yeah. stitching. Um, and my mate uh, James, who had it before, again did that. So apparently he sent it off to the re um, the retrimmers. Yeah. They emailed him back or called him. And they were like, "Oh, Mr. Mr. Mannion, we see we've been pissed about your RS steering wheel here." So if you want to confirm, do you definitely want this done in brown leather? With <laughs> it's nice when they question <laughs> yeah, you. It's yeah, like, yeah. don't question my taste. I want it brown. And he was like, "Yeah, yeah that's, that is what I want." So yeah, it's uh, it'd probably be worth loads of money retrimmed in black, but it suits the car. I can never go anywhere. It's no, it, it, it suits it perfectly. To be honest. Yeah. I'll turn the video dash off. Yeah, so the new ECU as well. Mm. So I've got the like the double din display on the. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for all your uh, Max ECU needs, you want to hook up uh, <laughs> yeah. Michael Clark for the Advantages. By all means, go for as many plugs as yeah. you like. <laughs> so he's selling uh, Max ECUs and they Watch are the back. one. Just... Yeah, so you get full Bluetooth display readout for an ECU. Anything that's Android enabled, yeah. you can download the Dash app. Tell them about the throttle plug that's got the <laughs> <laughs> you've got a, You've got your own marketing man right here. It's just... Oh, no. <laughs> it's free real estate. Um, oh, look. But yeah, it's like, it's like fully customizable and you can put all switches through the Dash and stuff as well. And it's like ECU, you spend enough money on an ECU, you don't need to spend another thousand quid yeah. like that. It's just like, no. it is like, kind of pointless at that point, like isn't it? 60 quid. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a cheap yeah. little screen and that's all you need, isn't yeah. it, at that point? And I thought it'd be... Doesn't it double up as your radio as well? I, could, I don't use it, I've got a proper radio. Well, I suppose it's, you know, being... like You can program it to do just about anything yeah, you want, yeah. can't you? Yeah, sat it's got sat nav in it and stuff. So. But yeah, it's cool. And um, yeah, what You've got the then? full yeah. base. So I, I was worried that I'd have connectivity issues with it and I yeah. thought it was just going to be a bit of a gimmick. So I went out and spent like £400 on all Omega dials and six months later, they're still sitting on my shelf. <laughs> I had a problem with that. Oh, you, I mean, you were right to assume that technology was going to break because it usually does, to be fair. Yeah, and I've but, heard uh, loads of other people running tablets and stuff and having problems, but I bet absolutely no problem. Well, as soon as you touch an Apple product on a car, yeah. it's it's pretty useless yeah. at that point. <laughs> but I love the the fact that you've got the exposed yeah, gear so as well. Yeah, Mark One Focus or a shifter, as you'd find it in a Focus, but obviously in a Focus you have center console and stuff yeah. that covers it so. but it's just a nice touch like even if it's just the standard linkage out of something the fact that yeah. you've got it exposed yeah. gives it that like little it extra i love it yeah, I, yeah it feels like rifle change, it feels like a nice and modern car but these gearboxes aren't known for enjoying <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. brackets 
shifting like there's no you can't just like bang through the gears it's yeah you, you take your time it's you got she's an old girl you've got to caress it in you can't just slam it yeah, yeah the old like rod change ib5 boxes and stuff you could just force them to go in but these aren't quite like that. bit of finesse yeah so yeah it's this yeah i think i've i think i've missed gears it take me a while to get used to drag racing uh, but thanks very much, mate, for uh, letting us have a little closer look at this car, man. Yeah, no worries, man. I want to, like, can we keep tabs on the little things that you do as you progress? Like, what, what's the plan, say, this year? Just enjoy it, or are you going to...? Um, I don't know, because I've just started up my business, so I don't oh, okay. have a lot of time for this. I've been eating about everything for something. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you will, and I'll be certain. But, yeah, I think over winter, I want to get... I'm going to get the black top head prepared, like, get it all boarded, get the right valve springs in, yeah. stuff like that. You got a whole um, set to put on it. I bought a massive whole set, but I, I'll be honest, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to put it on it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You never know. I just, I just sort of just. You get bored one day and it'll be like, the whole set's off. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah, wait, it's good. I had a weekend with that. Yeah. <laughs> See, I have got an idea for like the ultimate engine base setup, um, where it will be, but it requires a massive rework. Because I'd want a big forward facing turbo that here. Oh, right, which would be fully exposed, didn't you? Yeah. Um, which would then mean having like a half size radiator over here and then redoing the inlet manifold, have a central front body down underneath. So then have where the exhaust goes around the back, it leaves the tunnel, it leaves the sun to a front moon pipe underneath the sun, not the front body. And then it's also a wicked advert for your business. Yeah. <laughs> if you do stuff like that, because then people will be like, oh, okay. Like magazines will be like, wow, that's. Yeah. Yeah, There's something the really cool about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, massive holes are hanging up. We're probably not going to for a daily, yeah. but yeah, it would be a cool setup. Um, but yeah, I've, I've sort of said to myself, I obviously have given it a lot of thought. Yeah. Um, and if I do it, I won't actually sell anything off of this just in case I do it. And I'm like, oh, I have ruined my car. So I've just got it all back and then just pull that off. But yeah, I think it, it probably will be something at some point. Just something to do. Yeah, yeah, just something to do. As we say, like, it's never done. So you'll be no, happy no, to a point, done. and then you'll get a little bit more. You're like, well, let's just do this. And then actually, when we actually see it, we're like, yeah, we've got this house. Actually, it's stripped out. <laughs> no, it won't be like, it would never be stripped out. No, that's wicked. But yeah, I mean, I'll be limited to like 400 horsepower. I'm pretty much going to have to go to the third floor. I was going to say, but you say, you say limited. <laughs> yeah, no, you, the oil pumps are generally known to shatter um, around like 420 horsepower. So, I mean, shattering, that's an impressive failure. And yeah. that's not just a, a broken uh, no, <laughs> impeller, that yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, the gears just explode inside them because obviously you're abnormally absolutely flat out. Yeah. They just make a massive mess. Um, and there isn't an external oil pump kit available, but the chassis legs in the way of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as soon as you're cutting chassis legs, I think that's when you go, do you know what, I think that's... Uh, yeah, and it sits where the alternator is, so I'd have to move the alternator. Yeah, so. and all of a sudden, once you start having to do little things just to do one thing, it becomes a bit... Yeah. Well, and I it, suppose... it never needs more than 400 horsepower. It's plenty yeah. lively enough of probably the 300 it's got now. I mean, well, that's one take on a fast forward. <laughs> uh, and now we can look at another take on a fast forward. A slightly more... The other end of the, the, other end yeah. of the spectrum of fast forward. Still, still beige. It's still, it's still beige. We keep it beige. beige. But You're actually colour. proper beige, though. This is like ivory white. <laughs> that is, that's that's beige. as pink as ginger and strawberry blonde. It's still beige, let's be honest. <laughs>